Got another set of questions for the bonding and structure topic. And as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try them first. Okay, so make a start. So this dot and cross diagram. So if we start with the double bond here, so that means the nitrogen and the oxygen need to put two electrons in each. You'll notice I've gone for crosses for the oxygens and these dark circles for the nitrogen. So double bond here. And then if we go up here there, so that's a regular single covalent bond. So we need one electron from each in the shared pair. So oxygen has six valence electrons, remember? So one, two, three, four, five, six. So this extra electron, I've gone for a shaded triangle there, gives it that negative charge. And then this bond here is a date of covalent bond or a coordinate bond. So the nitrogen is providing the pair of electrons. You can tell from the direction of the arrow. So we need two dark circles there. And then the six valence electrons for the oxygen need to be here. And obviously that's all wrapped in a square bracket with a one minus charge outside. Moving on to the next question. So the classic wrong answer here would be to talk about phosphorus having more covalent bonds to break. This has got nothing to do with breaking covalent bonds. It's all about breaking the intermolecular forces between the molecules. So phosphorus, P4, has got more electrons than Cl2. Phosphorus has got 60 electrons in the molecule and chlorine's got 34. So because of that, phosphorus has stronger induced dipole-dipole forces between its molecules. We could say London forces there. And because of that, more energy is needed to break the stronger intermolecular forces between the P4 molecules compared to those Cl2 molecules. Moving on to part B, so we're told that magnesium and silicon have different types of giant structures. So we've just got to describe the bonding in these two substances and we've got to pay particular attention to the names of the particles and describe the forces between the particles. So magnesium first, obviously got a giant metallic structure. So it's got metallic bonding. Here's the particles between Mg2 plus ions and delocalized electrons. And silicon has a giant covalent structure. So obviously covalent bonding between silicon atoms. And finally, the question about the angle around the oxygen in butane 2 So you can see I've drawn the, um, that part of the molecule more clearly, showing the electrons involved in the bonding. So we'll say that cross belongs to carbon. It's one of its four valence electrons. And obviously to create that covalent bond, it needs um, an oxygen electron. So that's the black circle there. This bond here to the H, black circle from the oxygen and the open circle from the hydrogen. Oxygen in group six, so we've got six valence electrons, so we've talked about two, so it's obviously two lone pairs. So we'll do the explanation first. So we've got four electron regions in the valence shell, one, two, three, four. Two bonding regions, two lone pairs, two lone pairs, two bonding regions. And we need to say that lone pairs repel more than bonding regions. So the starting angle is going to be 109.5 degrees, but each lone pair will take two and a half degrees off that. So we need to take five off the angle, which means the bond angle is going to be 104.5 degrees.